There are many classic villains in the canon of popular fiction, but none are as widely represented or portrayed as the Fallen One. The Adversary, the Crooked Serpent, Old Scratch, Leviathan, Beelzebub, Belial, Baphomet, Mephistopheles, the Lord of Flies, the Lord of Lies, Lucifer the Morning Star, the Devil. I suppose in a country that was founded upon puritanical faith and would one day provide the modern world its most widely consumed fiction that such an important figure in the Judeo-Christian faith would provide for a compelling antagonist. I mean, as far as being the embodiment of what an adversarial force is supposed to provide for a story, how can any character match the presence of Old Hob himself? The history attached to the character alone makes him leagues above any other villain. There have been countless interpretations of the character, from classic literature to failed Hollywood blockbusters. Family's doing just fine. Busy, 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 busy. Need a vacation. <laughs> but for my money, my favorite interpretation of the character comes from one of my favorite comic books of all time, Neil Gaiman's The Sandman. Unlike nearly every other story, Lucifer here doesn't provide an immediate threat for Morpheus, God of Dreams. In fact, the only sort of problem he creates is when he decides to pack up hell and give the key to Morpheus, making the choice of who shall reign in the domain of the Inferno his problem. Lucifer here is less about stealing souls and tempting would-be sinners, and more a damned soul trying to make his escape. He flatly states he never made anyone do anything, and that he's only a convenient excuse for everyone's transgressions. He even muses about whether or not his rebellion was all a part of God's plan in the long run. In that sense, he's nothing more than a pawn of a deity who just needs someone to oppose him in a forced sense of enmity. By shirking his duties in hell, he rebels in the only way he possibly can, and slowly comes to a sort of peace with the Almighty in the process. This notion is riffed on in Drive Angry when one of Satan's minions opines that hell is more like a prison for wretched souls and that at the end of the day, the devil is really just a prison warden. What's that supposed to mean? It's a symbol of our pact with Lord Satan. Pact, huh? Ooh. Funny, he's never mentioned you. But for every compelling portrayal of the devil, there are a dozen not so compelling. And keeping this within the realm of comics, let's talk about Lady Death. Created in 1991, Lady Death is the vision of artist Stephen Hughes and comics writer and part-time Kenny G impersonator Brian Polito. As my co-worker Linkara has at great length explained, the 90s was a sad scene for comics, and it only takes a cursory glance at Lady Death to understand. What was it about this character that appealed to so many readers? What made her stand out from the countless amounts of titles that debuted in this tarnished era of the comic book? It was her tits! I'm serious, I don't think there's ever been a comic book character whose entire existence and noteworthiness relies on sex appeal as much as Lady Death. I mean, even Witchblade Sarah Pizzini has more to her than Lady Death. It also doesn't help that Lady Death appeared during a time when American comics seemed in love with turning biblical imagery and characters into bloody yarns, much like our previous episode, Spawn. Not to say that every one of these types of stories was god-awful. I dare say that Preacher had its moments every now and then. But ADV didn't go after Garth Ennis to make an animated movie out of his property. Guess who they did approach? Yup, ADV made an original animated movie from Lady Death. And holy hell does it suck! I know, big shock. Premiering in 2004 to pretty much universally shitty reviews, the film is actually worse than you think it would be. But I know that your curiosity must be met. So prepare for impossible backs and basketball-sized tits. It's the 90s all over again. We begin the film with, oh my god, the art is awful! Jesus! It's like somebody puked in my eyes! I mean, god, look at this animation! If their intention was to make hell look as eye-watering as possible, then mission fucking accomplished! The line work is horrendous, the animation makes the characters move like they're in a paint shaker, and it looks like they don't even know what the word perspective means, let alone incorporate it correctly. It's even worse when you think about ADV's other sinkhole, Sin the Movie. And as bad as Sin was, at least the show was competently animated. I'll even go so far as to say that some shots were downright impressive. Lady Death, on the other hand, looks like it was animated by the same people behind fucking Space Thunder Kids. Okay, okay, I'll admit, that was a bit harsh of me to say, but 
I'm sure that Lady Death will make up for its visuals with compelling writing and acting. What thoughts break your mind, my lady? Even such as we fear Lucifer's wrath. Fear? I know not the meaning of fear! <laughs> oh god. This is gonna be a turd ball. Uh, lady, you sure killing your own soldiers with your Sith lightning is a good idea? Lucifer is a powerful enemy. We would understand if you choose not to fight this day. Oh yeah, you march your entire army of hellish creatures for days on end, and then puss out before the battle even starts. Yeah, they'll understand. So, this all looks like shit, but at least the film is putting its best foot forward and opening with a battle scene, right? Fuck you, we flash back to 15th century Sweden for Lady Death's origin story. It's not like this was riveting material in the first place, but this is just the movie pulling the rug out from under your feet and sucker punching you. So, after making that hard left turn, we meet Satan, taking the guise of a not at all evil looking lord, kidnapping children and elderly alike for their souls. No, I mean it, he even says it out loud. I have no need of you, money. It's souls I'm after. I have a war to wage. I mean, if I were Satan and I was trying to disguise myself among the mortals, why in the world would I choose the most public office possible? At least I'd lose the ZZ Top beard and the gigantic fuck you World of Warcraft pauldrons. Matthias speaks, and God answers. Satisfied, priest? Perhaps you pray to the wrong God. God works in mysterious ways. One, fuck that cliched line. Two, that doesn't answer his question, you asshole. And three, we're not even five minutes into this movie! Apparently, in her previous life, Lady Death was Hope, the daughter of Satan, who I think is taking part in the Crusades, but Sweden hadn't had a crusade since the 13th century, and I'm putting actual historical thought into Lady Death. Bad Sage. Bad. So in her previous life, it looks like Lady Death was Stripperella, who was dating Cher from the Turn Back Time video. It comes as no surprise that her asshole dad decides to take her boy toy away from her, saying that he's being put in the front lines as a medic. There's a Bob Dylan song in there somewhere. Father, I beg you! Niccolo is- Niccolo is mine for all eternity. <laughs> wow, looks like Satan here has been taking parenting tips from Joan Crawford. Am I too young to make that reference? I'm also getting some weird flashbacks with Satan's voice here. Huh. Where do I know this guy from? I conjure the invisible shadow. I call to the illuminators of darkness. Huh. Wait. Could that be Kabapoo? Kabapoo! Mr. Kabapoo! It's Kabapoo! 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 Ha! <laughs> oh, if only I was watching Excel Saga right now. Hope decides to check in on her father as he's performing what must be his nightly ritual of calling on dark forces, as the townspeople have finally had enough of his shit. Gee, where have I seen this from? We don't like what we don't understand, in fact it scares us, and this monster is mysterious at least. We have a message for Matthias. It is late. Come back in the morning. This cannot wait. You know... For a priest who's rising up against tyranny and senseless violence, he sure is committing a lot of acts of senseless violence. In fact, when the priest finally confronts Lucifer in his den, he's quick to point out that he's not nearly as sanctimonious as he pretends to be. Too bad the film doesn't do anything with it. I see you also do the devil's work. I'm impressed. I am a man of God. And yet the blood on your staff would seem to argue otherwise. Like Matthew 5-4 says, love thy neighbor before you beat their skull in and then shit in their hearts! <gasps> I have plans for more, but they'll wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Jeez. Really? 
The devil doesn't have a more dignified way of revealing his true form. He he has to pull an Ace Ventura. <laughs> So, Satan fucks off and burns nearly everyone in the room except for Hope and the priest. And, since the priest doesn't know what to do with his raging murder boner, he decides to condemn Hope to death. Unholy spawn of evil, you shall be condemned to death for the sins of your father! God help me. Actually, where is God in all of this? Satan has been harvesting souls of both sinners and innocent alike, and God's just lying back and allowing this to happen? The fuck, God? Dear Lord, I've been dragged into perdition by the unholy one. Even when I followed your scripture. Please, Lord, hear my prayer. Tonight, hell yes I'm down. Like a bishop on an older boy, my brother, I will be there. Hold one second, Judy calls. Fuck you need, Twigger. Um... Lucifer's damn my soul to hell? Lord... For real? You must have got up some real fuckery. What y'all doing, motherfucker? What? No! I'm one of the faithful. I've been serving your lordship for as long as I can remember. And you've still crashed down under? Shit, that's whack. Lord, a dozen shit demons just showed me where the wild goose goes. You don't need to tell me that hell sucks. Only sinners take that tone with me. Forgive me, Lord. I'm just fucking with y'all. <laughs> good one. I know you're a good guy, bro, him. But it's that Satan guy you gotta understand. Unfathomable faggot. And not in a good way where he likes dudes. You mean... Fuck, he does this shit all the time. Boost my flock, takes a few souls to hell. This game's older than Jeopardy, Brohan. You just happen to draw the short straw. But you're God! Why don't you stop this? And Miss Sanford and Son, you loco! You don't need to be me to understand that I love me some red fox. That is one motherfucker I made for damn sure didn't end up in the pit. Hey, folks! Yeah. You digging them big booty angels? Oh hell yeah! <laughs> God, focus. Hmm. Oh, my point is, you should have been black and funny. Well, why didn't you make me black and funny? That is the first time anyone has ever wanted to be black. So, Hope is taken to the dungeon where she meets Lucifer's colon polyp, Chuckles, who basically tells her if she honored her father, she'll be reunited with Cher, saying that praying to God will fall on deaf ears. And considering who we're dealing with, I'm inclined to believe the Lord of Lies. So it comes as no surprise that when the day comes of her execution, she caves and declares her alignment with Lucifer, just as she's becoming extra crispy. If it were that easy to heal Burns, Michael Jackson would have gone from Jehovah's Witness to Aleister Crowley's lapdog in a heartbeat. Yeah, I know he wasn't a Satanist. Fuck you. Niccolo? Where are you? Where are you? He was here a minute ago, but, um, well, I lost him. You. All lies. I should have known. Ah, you're too hard on yourself. Just because the little shit appeared before you and not only demonstrated his ability to transform into Cher, but also declared his intention of getting you to declare your alignment with Satan, doesn't mean you should have used your pea-sized brain, you moron! Hello! I mean, yeah, she was burning to death when she made that pledge, so I guess you could make the argument that she wasn't making her decision in the most rational of mindsets, but I would argue that she would have been dead long before she could make the pledge. Bottom line, this film is stupid. So after a completely unnecessary and out of nowhere whipping scene, Chuckles brings her in front of her father. Ah, dude, what the hell, man? Don't talk to your daughter while you're entertaining your lesbian succubi. Don't make this weird. 
As my daughter, you possess great power. Power that knows no equal in heaven or hell. I can teach you how to harness this power. Together we can- I've had enough of your lies! You promised I would be with Niccolo for all eternity! He's the fucking Lord of Lies! Dude would try to sell you the Brooklyn Bridge even before there was a Brooklyn! Why is this surprising to you? Niccolo! Niccolo! I wish nothing more than that. Here is your precious Niccolo. And what's left of your dear departed mother. Mother? Oh God, no. What have you done to them? God help them. It's too late for God's mercy. Their souls are mine. Mm, yes, their souls are mine too. Watch me jerk off to internet porn, I guess. What do you do with a soul anyway? No more lies. Kill me, demon. Kill me, demon. But you're already in hell, so how could you... Stupid! You're so stupid! What the fuck are you talking about? Kill you? And then what? You go to double hell? Who'd reign in double hell anyway? You! Ah, right, you. Actually, it's good you stopped by. I've been meaning to ask you something. Oh, yes? Would you just leave my co-workers alone? They all think I'm you and it's getting annoying. Oh, that's just ridiculous. How can anyone confuse me for you? I know, right? We look totally different. Anyways, you gotta cut this shit out, man. I'm tired of getting rosaries in the mail from Nostalgia Critic. But the misery is so delicious. Where else would I go for my fun? I don't know. Why don't you give Kyle Bear a ring? I'm sure he'd love the attention. Hmm. Not a bad idea. Off I go, then. Ha! <laughs> oh, hey, Bear's such an asshole. I'm actually surprised how long it's taken me to say this, but god damn does Satan look awful. I know horns and hoofed feet are kind of a staple of the image, but do the horns have to look like a fucking goalpost? Having enough of her shit, Satan tosses Hope's ass out the window. She winds up washing ashore somewhere and has to fend off a few hellhounds using a nearby bone. Am I the only one getting Secret of Evermore flashbacks here? Eh, anyways. She randomly spazzes out and this, for some reason, unlocks her Lady Death powers, I guess. And suddenly she's badass! Hear me, Lucifer. Hope is dead. I have taken her place, and I will find a way to destroy you! Still a better origin story than Catwoman and Batman Returns. So, out of nowhere, this random guy approaches Lady Death and says he always knew that she would defy Satan. No, really, I'm not making this up. Have no fear. I am Cremator, and ever since I first saw your entrance, through the gates of hell, I knew you would be the one who could defy the Lord of Lies and survive. This is a perfect example of what I've been trying to convey with this review. Lady Death may have the most laziest script I have ever shown here on Anime Abandoned. And no, I'm not lying. The film introduces a main supporting character, but it does so in the most awkward and unnatural way possible. He just comes out of nowhere. The film does this a lot too, where established characters are thrown into scenes without any kind of connection or reason for being there other than to continue the plot. The teleporting jester demon at least has in-universe context for why he appears in random places, but characters like the priest and this guy suffer from the telltale signs of lazy screenwriting. There is no in-character reason why these two are interacting with each other. They're just going through the motions of the hero's journey. To me, lazy screenwriting doesn't mean having uninspired ideas or anything like that. It means not even bothering with the nuts and bolts of basic storytelling. And that's what Lady Death is at the end of the day. So Cosmo Creamer here talks about his backstory for no reason and explains that he used to be a weaponsmith for the Archdukes of Hell. How is it that you've managed to survive his wrath? I am his daughter, and I will not rest until I've destroyed him. Uh, then I see we have something in common. Either Creamer here is incredibly dense, or he has been in hell for way too long. 
What is this place? This is the chasm of Ptolemya. Here we are safe from Lucifer's influence. Oh dear. Hold on. Mm. Phoenix Wright, if you will. Objection! Now, Mr. Non David Cremo, or whatever you're calling yourself nowadays, are you not aware of what you said not 30 seconds ago? There is no freedom in hell. I've merely escaped his clutches for the moment, as you must have. Apparently not, because you just found yourself a place where Satan has no power over you. Now if that's not freedom in hell, I don't know what is. I rest my case. So they go to this place in hell to have a training montage where somehow Lady Death found thigh-high boots, a bra, and panties in hell to wear. And she starts to look like her usual self. She's still unable to channel her powers, but Kramer suggests stealing a very powerful sword from an Archduke of Hell named Asmodeus to help her funnel her powers. Oh yeah, and somewhere between all of this, Lady Death has amassed an army. How? As it just so happens, I have the movie's answer right here in my pocket. Yeah, see? Yeah, see? Oh, oh, oh. So Lady Death and friends infiltrate Asmodeus' lair, and after I get over the fact that he reminds me of Duriel from Diablo 2, she slays him and steals his sword. That was so worth the five minutes of screen time. Oh, and she also finds a demon horse. whoop de doo Now I have a steed worthy of leading me into battle against Lucifer himself. From this day on, you shall be Visago! Yeah, yeah! That would have been so funny four years ago. Yeah, it's that old. So what has Satan been doing all this time that Lady Death has been training? Search me, because it seems it's only now that Satan is doing something about it. It was established that years had passed during that training montage. Years! What, is watching lesbian succubi soap each other's tits that much of a time sink? You know, for being hell and all, it looks like a decent place to live. I mean, if Lady Death can find herself a lacy negligee in a huge bedroom like this, how bad could it be? Too bad they don't help her with her hilarious nightmares. Here is your precious Niccolo. No, Niccolo! Life in hell can be beautiful, daughter, if you let it. <laughs> Words fail me. As my daughter, you possess great power. Power that knows no equal of <laughs> What the hell happened? She turned into the Tasmanian devil for a second there. It's kind of hard to tell from my review, but the editing in the film is downright abysmal. The film fades to black in inappropriate times, it'll cut to awkward shots for half a second for no narrative important reason, and the use of fade cuts are abused to the point that they somehow ruin the concept of a fading cut. At this point in the movie, it barely has a story at all, so your attention is inexorably drawn to all the weird esoteric technical problems the film presents like a festering wound. Coincidentally, that's how I noticed that Killface from Frisky Dingo has a cameo here. The film basically grinds to a halt as we follow Lady Death and her army into battle. And follow... 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 Fucking Lord of the Rings had fewer marching scenes than this. And those were three movies about walking! Chuckles here plays scout for Lucifer and informs him of Lady Death's arrival. Your daughter has changed. She now calls herself Lady Death. Interesting. Interesting choice for a name. Lady Death. 
I know you're Satan and everything, but no one should be drooling when they're talking about their daughter! Chuckles' warning comes a bit too late as Lady Death springs her attack, and it's damn near unwatchable. You can't tell which undead soldier is on what side, so there's no investment. You're just watching canned shots of Lady Death swinging her sword at anything that moves. Her force lightning powers proves to be the difference maker, and Satan's troops pull back. And so does Lady Death? What? Our troops fought well this day. I did not want to sacrifice our gains on the chance, however remote, that Lucifer's retreat was a trap. Uh, it wasn't. You could have stormed the castle and killed Satan right there. Congratulations. You're a fucking idiot. And if you had stormed the castle, then Chuckles here couldn't have teleported into your tent and steal your sword while you were sleeping. Like he's doing right now! Amateur! Plus, the movie would have been over by now! Instead, Lady Death has to be consoled into continuing her battle and make do with a normal sword. So the battle ensues and she confronts her father. Oh, and she also has to mercy kill Cher to free his soul from Satan's clutches. Eh, you know, no biggie. The fight with Lucifer is really fucking creepy, not just because Chuckles here keeps teleporting around the room with Lady Death's stolen sword, which makes me wonder why he just doesn't teleport like 500 miles away to make sure she doesn't get it back. But because Satan here keeps making passes at his daughter. But you will beg for my forgiveness nonetheless. <laughs> Never! Your mother's conquest was easy. I wonder if you'll scream with pleasure the same way she did. Stop talking about fucking your daughter! I should not have to tell you that! Mercifully, one of her hellhounds manages to get her sword back and Lady Death kills Lucy. She... Kills the devil. Fuck it, it's an ending. With Satan gone, Lady Death frees her mother's spirit, and this makes hell change a little. Your soul is free. How? The presence of your purity was enough to bring hell back into alignment. You sure? Because it still looks like hell. Literally. She bids her mom's spirit goodbye, the day is won, and my god, that was shit! Easily! Easily in the top 10 of the worst films I've ever reviewed! This is just fucking unsalvageable! But, not quite anime month, still has one last test for me. One last test! Till next time.